to the Rowdy Studio. I am joined by Nate Ryan from USA Today, intrepid reporter. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> Some days. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk about Kentucky. We're going to preview Kentucky a little bit. And I guess, Nate, we should start by talking about what Kentucky is like, since it's the first time the cup cars have raced on this track. It's a one-and-a-half-mile D-shaped oval comparable to Kansas, yeah, Chicago, Las Vegas. The cookie-cutter era, as it's known. Uh, you had Kansas, Chicagoland, Las Vegas. Uh, all those tracks opened up with about four or five years of each other, and the idea was they were mile-and-a-half racetracks that could um, be multi-purpose. It was sort of like the multi-purpose baseball football stadiums phenomenon of the 1970s mm -hmm. when you had... Three River Stadium and Veterans Stadium and all those places kind of being built. That was the same kind of concept was, hey, we can have NASCAR and IndyCar run at the same track. And, and they have at Kentucky. Yes. They, they've had IndyCar uh, race there several times. And, of course, the nationwide cars and the trucks have, have raced there. So I guess in terms of our expectation, downforce track, uh, clean air is going to be of the utmost importance, track position, et cetera. Well, everything we've come to expect from a mile-and-a-half style downforce track. Yeah, and probably magnified this season lately when you look at how important track position has become in the last couple of months. Uh, we could we could see something very similar to when you know David Gilliland won his first NASCAR race in what was in the Bush Series in 2006 when he played some strategy, got out ahead of the field, and didn't have to pit, and nobody could pass him. Um, right. that, that could happen again on Saturday. Absolutely. Now, the other thing that we hear the guys talk a lot about in terms of Kentucky is the racing surface itself. Evidently, it's really a very, very bumpy surface, a rough surface. Um, I think they're even going to repave it after this race. Right, right. Yeah, I, it's, it's never been paved, uh, to my knowledge, since it opened in 2000. I actually talked to an IndyCar driver, Scott Dixon, who uh, shortly after a test there about six or seven years ago, and he referred to it as a... Uh, Kentucky Off-Road Motor Speedway, which <laughs> may give you an idea of how bumpy it is. Uh, granted, those bumps aren't felt quite as much in stock cars versus Indy cars, but uh, it gives the track a lot of character, as they say, and the guys who can get over the bumps will be the ones who are the fastest and probably the guys who are going to win. I, I can't also, you know, I can't help but think about the splitter in terms yeah. of a bumpy surface and how, I mean, everybody's striving to get that thing as low as possible. Um, the front end as low as possible, that, that's going to have to right. be an issue with these bumps. Right, and the way they d sort of tweak the front end of the cars now, the, that, that front is a lot more rigid than it used to be, and uh, th this could be, you know, maybe, we haven't heard a lot about that since the beginning of the year, but this could be a, a, a bigger test of, of that. I'm sure that, you know, once the, the gates swing open for this open um, session where they have a full day, it was just sort of unusual. Teams get to come in a day early and just test for eight hours or whatever. I'm sure there'll be a lot of chatter about that. Yeah, and I w I'm glad you brought that up because I think the third issue has to be um, the level of experience that some drivers have versus others. To me, that seems overplayed oh, a little totally. bit, yeah. especially given the six-hour test on Thursday. Do the guys who have run here in other series really have a distinct advantage over the guys who haven't? No. Uh, and Dale Arnold Jr. kind of summed it up uh, last week at Daytona. He was asked, like, how long does it take you when you get to a new track to get acclimated to feel like you, you, you've got a handle on the place? 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're going to have a full day Thursday to, to figure out the, the place and sort of get the lines down and, and probably get a, a far bit along on, on getting the setup correct. And as Junior pointed out, I mean, they've never raced with the cup cars at this place. They've never raced with the new nationwide cars at this place. True. So really, even if you're a former winner like Gilliland, like Joey Logano at this track, I don't know how much that's going to help you at any point during the weekend because the cars are going to be completely different. You mentioned David Gilliland, and he was actually in the Rowdy studio earlier this season and took us for a lap around Kentucky Speedway. Uh, let, let's sort of ride along with Gilliland. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good racetrack. It's, it's nice and wide, you know, um, coming off a of turn... Getting into one, um, you can really arc it in the corner, and, and like I said, it's nice and wide. Uh, the back straight, the banking is is you know kind of mediocre, but uh, the part I like the best is just coming off a of turn four. It's it, like again, it's nice and wide. You can pass, you can go high or low, and um, just a just a great racetrack. I'm really looking forward to racing there again. Also, you you look at the list of guys who have won here in different series. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, David Gilliland, Joey Logano, I think Greg Biffle won a truck race. Plus, it used to be a major testing destination. Right. So I don't I don't even think there are that many guys in the series who have yet to log any miles or any right. laps 
at Kentucky? Probably zero. I bet that everybody has tested at least once because, as you said, when 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 NASCAR was in that weird period between the testing ban and when they were limiting testing at, at sanctioned tracks, this was where everybody went every other week to, to prepare for the mile and a half. So I think virtually every driver in Sprint Cup has laps around this place, and I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. So I guess we're looking at the usual downforce subjects, uh, Carl Edwards, uh, maybe Greg Biffle, since this is similar to Kansas, uh, the Bush brothers. Right. right. Um, do you think a Joey Logano can ride the momentum? I mean, he timed his momentum pretty well. Poland, Sonoma, top five finish at Daytona, and now a track where he's won three races in the Nationwide Series. Can he capitalize on that, or is it just sort of level playing? I'm not a big believer in momentum in, in motor racing. I know, I know guys talk about it, how it, it lifts the, the spirits, the morale of a crew, and, and changes things. But uh, that team still, to me, I mean, NASCAR the last three weeks has, has basically raced in three totally different forms of racing, where restrictor plate, uh, road racing, and then in Michigan. And if you go back to Michigan, I don't think the 20 team performed quite as well there as they did at the road course and the restrictor plate. And you're not really going to see much of those two types of races again the, the, the rest of the way. So um, I, I just I don't think that he's going to come in, you know, feeling as if he's going to be a world beater. He might come in with a little bit more confidence because he, he has won there a lot. But, uh, yeah, there's not going to be a lot that transfers from Daytona to Kentucky, certainly. All right, that's Nate Ryan. He's with USA Today. I'm Buzz Cutler from Rowdy.com. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the Kentucky race. We'll be back on Monday with Bass in the studio to wrap the whole thing up. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.